Hello, I am Ryan Clater, university professor and comics artist of A Hunter's Tale and the currently running Mirror Drawings at mirrordrawings.com. You are watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a returning guest. It feels like he has not been here since early this year. And when I say early this year, I mean way back in January of 2022. A lot changes in, in nine, ten months here. But we are joined by the ever-talented Ryan Clater. How are you doing today? Kurt, doing really well. It's so good to see you again. Thank you so much for having me back and continuing to do this for so many creators. You're uh, a force of nature. Thank you for what you do. Well, coffee fuels me and so does spite, but it's mainly coffee. <laughs> I guess the latter doesn't hurt either. <laughs> <laughs> for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what your course bringing to Two Geeks Talking today. Thank you for asking all these questions. <laughs> so my name is Ryan Clater. I'm a uh, university professor and a comics artist. And when you and I last chat, I was doing a Kickstarter campaign for A Hunter's Tale, which was a little comic book I put together based on my late grandfather's poem about empathy. And that was wildly successful. Also, thanks to you for helping me promote that. The book is real and in my hands now. That went super well. So well, in fact, it five digit funded for wow. this tiny little $8 comic book that I put together. So that was my best book launch, most successful book launch to date of my entire career. That was fantastic, but it also came with a lot of fulfillment. So I was packing and shipping and printing for months after that campaign. And when that was over, I just sort of like needed a while to wipe my creative brow, you know, <laughs> and, and it took me a little bit to get back into the creative groove. Like I have so many projects that I want to get to, but they all felt a little too big to undertake so soon after such a big fulfillment. I was just looking around for ways to get my hands moving again. And I ran across my buddy, who's a cartoonist, his name is Merrick Bennett. And he was doing these little mirror drawings. He'd show us a quarter and then how he would mirror them into existence. And I thought, wow, that, that looks really interesting. I'm going to try my hand at that. And I loved it. It was so relaxing and carefree and uh, meditative and just felt kind of restorative and kind of uh, allowed me to, to get my artistic groove back. <laughs> and so all that to say, I kept doing them and doing them. I, I was sharing these with my patrons on Patreon and eventually shared them with my uh, email update list. And I kept getting really great feedback about them. Like, oh, these are really interesting. Like, are we going to see a book about them? And honestly, initially that was not my thought, but now it is <laughs> uh, because I'm compiling them all into this really lovely edition of what I'm calling an interactive art book. So this is going to be a beautifully produced hardcover book. It's starting out at 48 pages, showcasing the mirror drawings, but also pairing them with their original little corner page of my sketchbook photograph to show you what they started as mm. and then what they ended up like. And the entire thing is being printed in black and white so that wow. you can interact with this book by coloring it. If you wish, you don't have to color it if you don't want to. It's also great for just browsing like an art book. I'm super excited about this book. It's going to be my first hardback book. And I've partnered with a great printer called Mixum, who has printed some really successful crowdfunding campaigns before for the likes of Lorenzo, who does the How to Think When You Draw series. They've also printed Pet Human, which you know blew up on Kickstarter earlier this year. I'm really Happy to work with somebody who knows hardback printing very well, but also has a big interest in 
the environment. So they do a lot of things, which I've listed on my campaign page about really trying to be sustainable, source their papers ethically. It's great to see excitement in in a new project. It's great to see excitement in the meditative practice of art, because I don't think a lot of people take the time, at least not in their later years in general, because the last time I think we, we colored anything was back in like kindergarten, grade school, you know, <laughs> back when we had no worries whatsoever. And now that we're adults, you know, we, we don't take the time to appreciate what we have and, and what we can accomplish with a simple matter of, of a beautiful art book like this. And, and I have to admit, besides the, the video of the Kickstarter campaign, I loved the fact that you have so many great tiers. You have so much productivity that you can do in this type of book that it's just, it's wonderful to take some time for yourself to actually appreciate not only art, but your own creativity that maybe we've uh, lost along the way. I was really in that place of needing some self-care after that last campaign. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's going to be really amazing to see other people take this element of self-care that I was trying to sort of gift myself with, but also see other people do that as well. Like take some time, take some time out of their lives to slow down a little bit. Like you said, this is an activity that we probably haven't done since we were kids. I would love to see what people do with these illustrations uh, in terms of, of coloring them, but it's not to say that you can't just relax and enjoy the book on its own too, without coloring it. I'm really excited about how well produced this book is going to be. I'm sparing no expense here. This is going to be a really great bound edition of this material because I'm even having them section sewn, which this is like print nerd stuff, you know, like <laughs> how this is put together. But there's a couple different ways you can bind hardback books. And yeah. one is glue bound and the other is sewing them. And basically glue bound, you take the edges of the pages and you slather a bunch of glue on them and then you slap a cover around them. And if you've ever seen a book like that, it doesn't quite open all yeah. the way. You can kind of feel that it's not supposed to lay flat. And that was really important to me, especially since this high quality art book is also hopefully going to be used as an interactive art book. And if you're trying to color this, I didn't want the book to be like wobbling back and forth. I want this to lay nice and flat for folks who pick this up. That was a pretty big extra expense oh, yeah. on my part. And I really had to do a lot of calculations and spreadsheet work about how can I make this print run make sense, but also have it at a price point that's reasonable for people to pick up. I feel like I, I really did my best to walk that tightrope. So excited to put this in people's hands. <laughs> this would be rather interesting from a social media perspective as well, too, because not only with, with your patrons asking about this book and, and appreciating the work that you've done with previous examples, but now that they'll, they'll have the actual book in hand, I could see this as interactive TikTok, like mini clips of seeing a before and after process and, and stitch it together with, with what you created. And, you know, I could see some really cool social media, like buzz about this type of, not only campaign, but this type of practice, because as much as we love the same six songs on TikTok that are playing on repeat continuously, <laughs> I think we need a new, a new trend and a new viral sensation of meditative art practices. Yeah, I'm I'm not going to stop that from being the next trend. Let's make it happen. Hashtag mirror drawings. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> but yeah, I, I really do sincerely look forward to seeing what people do with this book. I've created some line art here. I'm really excited about to see the different iterative results from readers. I think it's going to be extra exciting if this reaches you know stretch school status and i have no doubt that i'm sure it will are we looking at expanding the actual book from from its 48 pages like what, what's your what's your ultimate end goal for for this type of campaign oh kurt you you touched on an obsession of mine <laughs> i have so many things i want to do with this book <laughs> and i i'm not sure where we will get to but i have stretch goals lined up a dozen different stretch goals outlined at this point. And again, when this airs, I'm not sure where we're going to be. Maybe, hopefully, we'll be in stretch goal territory. I, I really don't know what to expect from this campaign, only because it's so wildly different from anything I've done before. And so I don't know if people are going to 
see it and think, oh yeah, I'm in for that. Or if they're going to be like, yeah, I'll, I'll wait until you do a comic again. <laughs> like, I just don't know. But yeah, I've got stretch goals outlined to build this book bigger and better than I'm proposing at the start for sure. Additional pages, ribbon bookmarks, upgraded paper stock, foil stamping on the cover. If we can make it that far, uh, I think it would be really cool to have like a mirrored effect on the title of mirror drawings. Uh, so we'll see how far we get. I, I have a lot, lot, lot of stuff planned if this campaign exceeds the funding goal. What exactly are you excited about these stretch goals when when you reach them? Or is there anything else you're excited about this campaign that you're you're hinting at that you haven't told me about yet? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, there's there's a lot I'm really jazzed up about. But as far as like reward tiers go, we've got that introductory tier for the book itself. But then beyond that, there is a print tier mm -hmm. that I had these raised gold foil custom rounded corner square prints created that are signed and numbered. And I don't know if this is going to do it justice or not, oh, but beautiful. these are raised gold foil and just gorgeous. I, I tried to take some nice shots of it on the campaign page and I would really urge people to go over there and check those out. These came out better than I'd ever expected they would. <laughs> so I think they're the, the prettiest prints I've ever made. I have them right here at my desk. I keep looking at them. <laughs> I hope that other folks get excited about that too. So that's something that I was really crossing my fingers. They would turn out all right. And boy, did they. And then I've got some, some other reward tiers. I think I mentioned the original art mm -hmm. reward tier. So people are literally able to get a page out of my sketchbook that is reprinted in mirror drawings. After I did a Hunter's Tale campaign, I had a lot of people coming to me asking questions about, hey, how about this tour that you did? Or man, that campaign went bonkers. What'd you do? Or, you know, just ask me a lot of questions. And I love talking with people about comics, about their own careers in comics and how they might boost that even further. And so one of the reward tiers is for a creative consultation. It's just a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with you and me. You know, I'm a university professor and I've been doing this comics thing for almost a couple decades at this point. I have a lot of thoughts on it and would love to share them with people. I hope to have a few folks take me up on that too. I'm limiting that creative consultation reward to only five. It's got to be the first five folks. I, I love chatting with people uh, about their work and strategizing ways to, to help them move even further. Those are a few of them I'm, I'm pretty excited about. In this day and age with as fast as social media is and the fact that everything's so digital, there, there's no real one-on-one -on -one connections so much uh, anymore. And those that are, are usually very limited in terms of time and scope. So I'm, I'm glad that you're actually providing a wonderful service that you know, you provide your students every day with. So I think that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A lot happens, of course, in nine months since I, I last spoke with you here because, you know, we're always evolving, not only professionally in our careers, but also personally as well, too. I think I've seen a lot of volunteer organizations pop up from time to time, especially with the pandemic and all that stuff. Is there any organizations that you've, you've connected with that you personally feel attached to that provides a service to the masses? I'm so glad you asked that because a part of this campaign, I have partnered with an organization called One Tree Planted, and you can check them out for yourself if you want. It's onetreeplanted.org. And together with this campaign, upon its success, I am going to donate the money to plant one tree for every single backer of this campaign. So you get a book a tree gets planted that is down pretty far in the scroll on my <laughs> Kickstarter page. So if you didn't see it, I wanted to, to highlight that. You can feel good about buying this book. It's being printed by an ethical printer who ethically sources their paper. And also once you get a book and the campaign succeeds, Every single backer means an additional tree planted. I'm very proud to be partnered with One Tree Planted. And I want to give a quick shout out to the folks over at Oneshi Press, who were the first creators I saw do this. 
this partnership with One Tree Planted. And I messaged them privately and said, you know, first of all, this is such a cool thing that you're doing. And secondly, can I do this too? And they're like, please, yes, go do this. We want everybody to jump on this bandwagon. So uh, I, moving forward, I cannot envision a campaign where I don't do this. And I, I feel a little uh ashamed that it's taken me this long to do it but after i saw uh jl and Lindsay do it on their tarmux campaign just a few months back it just hit me like a bolt of lightning and like this this has got to be something not just for them not just for me but everybody doing print work you know we're using trees to make our creative work and so let's give back let's replant let's reforest and i'm really happy to be doing this moving forward that's wonderful. That's that's great to see. There's a lot of organizations that plant trees or or go green in that regard, and I'm glad to see that there's actual organization that allows you to to link in with these types of campaigns. So that's that's beautiful to see. You love it. They are a pretty amazing organization, from what I can tell. They do not require you to be a business or require you to have a partnership. Anybody can go there and donate a dollar, and for every dollar they plant a tree. Simple as that. And you can even request where those trees get planted. Okay. They have a bunch of different locations, but I am a California native, born and raised and lived until I moved to Michigan, you know, umpteen years ago. It's, it's been a while now. You know, as well as I do, California has been devastated with forest fires. Uh, I had some buddies that were real close to the recent mosquito fire and it was mm. so scary and i've had to evacuate when i lived in california too i'm going to be directing the trees to be planted in california because that's very near and dear to me that's a part of this campaign and for all of my campaigns for the foreseeable future i, I can't imagine not doing it anymore looking at your artwork then obviously you've you've varied in styles from from time to time and you you're always learning especially being a professor of comics as well, too. I'm sure you see the early stages of, of comic art to its current stages now with the digital process. You know, how's that knowledge, I should say, helped you in, not only in, in your own professional work, but in this particular campaign? As far as the use of digital art in this particular campaign, every mirror drawing that I've done has been in this little sketchbook right here. It's very analog, it's ink on paper, and I will scan these in, mirror them digitally. So really the digital process for me is scanning, thresholding out all the off-white paper. And if I use pencil, sometimes I use pencil, sometimes I just go straight ink to page, thresholding that out, and then mirroring the drawings a couple different ways. I'd say the digital portion of this book is somewhat limited. In the past, I'd have a very hybrid analog digital approach to making comics. For example, A Hunter's Tale, I would digitally lay out the page in Adobe Illustrator so that I have these you know, vector panels set up. And then from there, I would take those panels into Clip Studio where I would digitally pencil. Then I'll print that out on Bristol in blue line so that I can hand ink everything manually. Mm -hmm. And then I'll scan that back into the computer to digitally color in Photoshop. So it's a really like hybrid method for me. For me, it works for a, a couple of reasons. One, I have not been able to get the fidelity of ink line that I want digitally. It just yeah. feels a little too clean, a yeah. little too smooth processed. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I want like a little bit of that wobble and hand drawn look to my artwork. So I kind of rejoice in that. Secondly, and I talk to my students about this all the time too. If you have a 100% digital process, then you're kind of cutting yourself out of potential profit. And you can look back at a Hunter's Tale campaign. I listed every single one of the original art pages from the book on that campaign. Every single one of them sold out. And if you do just a little bit of math, you'll see that if I did not do that, I would have left literally thousands of dollars on the table. I encourage folks to have a tangible medium 
that they can monetize. I am doing the same thing for this campaign where I'm offering the original pages from mirror drawings from my sketchbook. So folks who pledge will have a first backed first pick of the original art from mirror drawings. There's something freeing about the creative process, especially with drawing itself, whether you're whether you're a professional like yourself or a severe amateur like myself, seeing the the process, creating something yourself, coloring something yourself, learning theory, learning the little things that make artists amazing. We're going to see maybe a TikTok series on the the, the process of this because I think from a social media perspective, these types of drawings would be a huge boost in in this quick media market that is there? Yeah, that's a good question. I have my sights firmly set on mirror drawings, the book right now. I currently do not have any plans to release a mirror drawings too. I guess we'll see how this campaign goes and what the demand for it is, but I do have a lot of other projects I want to get to. My next project that I thought I would be working on right now, not working on mirror drawings. Again, this is kind of a a surprise project for me. My next project I'll be working on is an art book collecting 20 years of Elephant Eater comics, you know, me doing comics, but it's also featuring a bunch of unpublished work, like everything from my neon design to watch designs to hired illustrations that I've done for pinball companies and uh, all sorts of different stuff. It's even going way back to like my grad school days when I was illustrating these interactive games and using, you know, antiquated technology like Flash and Director and stuff <laughs> like that. I'm really excited to put that out. I'll likely be launching that campaign in mid to late 2023. Uh, because 2024 is the 20th anniversary of Elephant Eater Comics, and I'd like to have the book available that year. I'd love to chat with you uh, when that book is closer to being ready to be talked about. <laughs> Fair enough. I always have to, you know, finagle guests to come on the show. That's what it is. I know you said you weren't expecting it, but when you started it to its final completion here, what was your mental journey throughout that? process not not creatively but mentally I, I know you said you you felt refreshed but what else was occurring inside your creative mind you always have such interesting very good questions that make me think i like that um <laughs> so i think i mentioned the fact that this was initially just like play time for me right like just getting back into arting after a lot of logistical work on my part, I was just so spent after that last campaign in a good way, you know, because it just exceeded my wildest expectations, how well that book was received. But with that said, it also took a toll packing and shipping books for every single night, every single day for months on end. And I, I'm proud to say that everybody got their book on time too, uh, but it was just a ton of work. So initially, making my way through that like fog of uh, exhaustion and trying to find my way back into art. I, I know it will happen because it's a part of me. I'm an artist. And having done this for almost 20 years at this point, I've seen my own ebbs and flows. And I, I know that even if I uh, have a period that is art less or <laughs> where I don't do art quite as much, I, I know it'll come back. So part of that mental journey is being aware of that as an artist and having had the experience and the history to understand that and not get afraid about it. I used to get afraid when I was younger, like, oh my God, is that the last thing I'm ever going to do? Is this feeling permanent now? Am I, am I done? Like, is that it? <laughs> and I did not have that fear this time, but really I tried to sort of relax into what is this? What is it going to look like? Uh, how am I going to get myself back into this in a healthy way? And these mirror drawings were not the only things that I tried. I was trying a Posca marker work, which are like these uh, acrylic markers. And I was doing a number of different uh, experiments with that. I also signed up for some online courses for some different type of uh, of artwork just to try new things because 
I'm a teacher, but I also like learning too. You know, I, I, I want to, I, I always want to expand my artistic horizons and see what else is out there. So I took some classes and it just happened to be this happen chance, uh, uh, seeing my buddy, Merrick Bennett do these things and just, you know, shrugging my shoulders and like, ah, yeah, I'll, I'll give that a try. And like I said, it was just, it was really enjoyable and relaxing. And as I kept doing them was really restorative. And also I got into this mindset of, I don't know. I, I think that as an artist, I enjoy custom puzzle solving hmm. <laughs> and that comes into play with things like neon design there's certain restrictions that you you have to be aware of like if you have an animated neon sign you can't have those lit tubes cross one another otherwise when the back tube is lit it's going to illuminate the front tube so you have to be aware of things like this or watch design you know you're working on a central mechanism and how does that thing move there's different types of watch movements and how can that translate into an illustration or a narrative even. So I, I like trying to figure those things out. And the same holds true with comics, but also these mirror drawings where even at rest over the past few months, my mind would be thinking about, oh, what if I did this thing to make a different type of mirror drawing? Or what if I want additional symmetry that doesn't quite, you know, reflect that for reflection, but looks like something different. How can I make something with eight axes or 10 axes or six axes instead of eight axes or four axes? Um, what could I do to sort of um, mask those axes so it doesn't look like there's four exact repetitions? And uh, I don't know, I, I think it just really uh spoke to my my puzzle solving part of my brain and allowed me to really enjoy this process i just i don't know i found it tons of fun and i hope other people do too <laughs> well ryan i do hate to say it but that ends this particular episode of two geeks talking i want to thank you so much for coming back on the show such a pleasure to talk with you as always kurt thank you again for chatting with me and thank you again for doing this for so many thousand over a thousand creators yeah. just boggles my mind you are a prolific dude <laughs> and thank you for continuing to do this for so many years 15th year i've been doing this so wow uh, congratulations i feel old <laughs> <laughs> you and me both <laughs> you know we, we wouldn't keep doing this if we didn't love it. so you know I, right. I i can't wait to do this for another five or so years we'll see what happens maybe i'll reach that that 20th anniversary as well too we'll, we'll see what happens in the future i hope so i hope so <laughs> Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talk. And you can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others, as Ryan mentioned, on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. And, of course, on our website, on our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated than our website, which is youtube.com forward slash c forward slash tgtmedia. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.